Yep. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, thanks for whoever might be joining us. Uh, we are being broadcast on Facebook Live. Uh, I am Mayor Shelley Brindle, and I am here today with our town planner, Don Samet. Morning, everybody. And uh, I just want to let you know, um, on the line also is our public information officer, Kim Ford, and she's going to be uh, looking at the questions that might come in from the Facebook Live, and we'll be um, asking them uh, over the course of the, the, the morning. So, uh, so as we move forward, please feel free to put any questions you might have in the comment section, and Kim will be sure and raise them with us if it's something that we haven't covered. So. Uh, so the purpose of today is really to provide some background and information on redevelopment and the process and what the town is currently undergoing so that uh, you, the public, has some context for, uh, for, for where we've been and where we're about to go. Um, and we're very lucky to have uh, Don Samet really leading the charge. So I thought before we got into the specifics, I'd let Don introduce himself a little bit to you so you can appreciate um, how lucky we are to have someone with Don's background in several different municipal places. And so Don, why don't you just talk a little bit about, you know, how long you've been in Westfield, where you were before, and overall what your experience has been. Sure. Uh, well, thank you, Mayor. Well, um, I have a master's degree in city and regional planning um, from the Blaustein School of Planning and Public Policy uh, at Rutgers University. Um, I obtained that degree, it was 1997. Um, I am a licensed professional planner in the state of New Jersey, and that's been since 2003. Um, I also have the national level certification for planners, or as is referred to as a member of the American Institute of Certified Planners. I've had that since 2000. Um, I'm also a member of the uh, board of directors of downtown New Jersey, which is a um, basically a downtown um, economic uh, advocacy uh, group. And coincidentally, um, Bob Zuckerman, our uh, chair of, or director of the DWC is president of that group. Um, I'm also a member of the redevelopment committee of the New Jersey chapter of the American Planning Association. Um, uh, and uh, Superior Court has also recognized me as an expert in the field of uh, city and urban planning. Um, I, before I um, talk about where I've worked before, um, personally, I grew up in Kenilworth. So um, as a child, I visited regularly um, downtown Westfield. Um, we go to the movies, we get ice cream. Um, in the summertime, my mother and grandmother would grab my brother and I by the wrists and drag us to their Lord and Taylor shopping trips. But as a reward, we got to, to visit Mindewaskin Park. So. It's great to be back here in Westfield um, on a professional level and be a part of the community, which was really part of my uh, youth to a certain degree. Um, professionally, I've been very fortunate to have worked in some great municipalities in the state of New Jersey. I was the assistant township planner in Montclair for a number of years. Um, I was director of planning and redevelopment in the city of Asbury Park actually for 11 years. And that was prior to um, me joining uh, the staff here in Westfield. I started my career um, as a planner at the county level in the Sullivan County Catskills. And while there, I worked extensively with um, an organization at the planning department, which was called the Main Street Redevelopment Center. And we worked with um, various downtowns throughout the county um, uh, to improve their main streets. Uh, we work with them in design standards, on facade grant programs. Um, other duties included helping them with site plan and subdivision reviews. And I also managed the department's geographic information system, which is a geographic mapping and an, uh, analytic tool. In Montclair, I was staff planner for zoning board, planning board, historic preservation commission, I reviewed development applications, you know, your site plan, your subdivision, your variance applications, applications for certificates of appropriateness um, that went before the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, in my time there, we actually were able to designate the first local district uh, in Montclair. Um, and that was for um, properties along Bloomfield Avenue. That, that was very exciting. 
um, worked on redevelopment planning there, managed a facade grant program, grant applications, drafted land use ordinance amendments. Um, and then from there, um, a director's chair opened up uh, down in Asbury Park. Um, and there I, I had a very um, broad set of responsibilities. I was not only staff planner for the planning board and zoning board and redevelopment entity, and reviewed development applications, prepared land use ordinance amendments, but Asbury Park was um, very heavily involved in use of the local redevelopment and housing law. So um, it included working with the designated redeveloper or redevelopers of the waterfront, um, working with them on uh, redevelopment plan amendments. In my time there, we actually drafted two new redevelopment plans. Um, one of which I'm very, very pleased uh, with. It was for an area on the western side of the city that you don't hear too much about in the press. Um, it was a uh, older commercial district which ran into some really hard times and we led a significant community planning effort um, and drafted a redevelopment plan uh, for that area. And I'm pleased to say that it is, it is now moving forward. Um, we're seeing development there and um, new, new public spaces new community spaces, um, some new commercial space, and even some new residential in an area of that city that needed it. Um, after 11 years in Asbury, I the, the position of town planner opened up in Westfield. And I saw Westfield was, um, you know, it's interesting. Um, I'll tell a story at, at the risk of offending some people. And, and um, an attorney that I worked with down in Asbury said to me, Don, you're going to go up to Westfield boy, are you going to be bored up there? There's nothing going on. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, his prediction was completely off. Um, there was a lot going on in town, a lot of good things, and a lot of things that I think are appropriate for moving Westfield forward. And uh, the town is really doing a lot of good work on the planning side and preparing us for um, the decades to come. Um, it is a exciting time to be a planner in Westfield. It's an exciting time to be a planner in New Jersey. Um, and I'm happy to be here. Um, so that's that's my story. Well, we are very, very lucky. And I have to say, sometimes it's just a, a meeting of the moment and the experience. I don't think you put, could have anticipated probably what was gonna be happening in Westfield. And, no. and clearly, you know, I think when people hear Asbury Park and you had been there for 11 years, I mean, I think we've all, you know, have seen the transformation of Asbury Park over the last 20 years from what it was to really what it's become. And it's quite incredible. Uh, and I think, you know, your broad experience in other towns in the county, I think seems to all be coming to uh, fruition and, and benefiting us, especially on the redevelopment front where you've had so much experience. Oh, so you. maybe you could just talk a little bit. I, you mentioned some of the things about, you know, redevelopment, how you used it, but mm -hmm. talk very broadly about what redevelopment is and what the what the what the benefits are of redevelopment and what your observations are about the opportunities for redevelopment in Westfield. Sure. Um, well, you know, a lot of times when people hear the term redevelopment, you know, they think of the term blight. I mean, I think that comes out of the um, the old urban renewal from you know decades ago when when uh, urban renewal and redevelopment was clearing blocks and blocks of, of land and then building uh, multi-story apartment buildings, right? You know, sometimes referred to as the projects. And, but the redevelopment in today's day and age is not that. Um, today, the state of New Jersey has the local redevelopment and housing law. And it's a great tool for municipalities to have in their toolbox um, really to address the the what, the when, um, and by whom, and the how of how a town is going to redevelop it itself. There are a lot of reasons in which towns use the redevelopment law. Sometimes there, it's to um, improve uh, deteriorated properties, sometimes to um, improve um, underutilized properties, and but even to encourage investment in properties which are in good condition. Um, to ensure their continued upkeep. And we've seen some of that uh, here in Westfield with the area in need of rehabilitation uh, delineations, which I can describe a bit as well. But the, the redevelopment law 
you know, when it comes to the what, it's within a redevelopment area, you can have very specific land use regulations for what you want to see on a property. You can have specific design standards. You can have specific guidelines for what happens on lot X as opposed to lot I, uh, Y, which may be right next to each other. Um, much more so than you can with uh, traditional zoning ordinance. You have the when and the by whom. You can, a municipality can choose to require a redeveloper agreement with a potential um, redeveloper of the property in order to um, lay out time timelines for when it's going to happen. You have a specific project schedule um, and you know who you're choosing. You don't have to go to a lowest bidder kind of scenario. You choose the best partner for the municipality in moving forward. Um, the how, what, what do we want the developer to provide to the town in terms of uh, public amenities? You can ask for um, some public spaces uh, in, your, in your redevelopment sites. Um, how is the town going to assist uh, the developer in moving forward? Very often you'll see um, expedited approvals or dedicated planning board meetings, that kind of thing. Um, many municipalities in New Jersey, comparable municipalities to Westfield use the redevelopment law. I mean, the list goes on and on. Montclair, Morristown, Summit, uh, Princeton, um, and then of course, um, more local to us, Garwood, Scotch Plains, Cranford, a lot of the work we see going on in, in those adjacent communities are all coming out of um, uh, the redevelopment law and using redevelopment planning. Uh, Fanwood Crossing and the development um, adjacent to their rail station, all redevelopment. And that was um, an award uh, winning project as well. So Don, you bring up some good points about, um, I think the the evolving definition and role of redevelopment from the 90s. And when people mm -hmm. talk about the equivalence of redevelopment and blight, that really is kind mm -hmm. of a decades old term and intent. Right. And right. it seems like the state has evolved to be able to use re redevelopment to be more of an economic development driver. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's really important for people to know because I think there was some word that, you know, we blighted the whole town when it couldn't have been further from the truth. And it just showed a lack of understanding of how redevelopment law is applied in today's climate. Right. One, uh, I thought the other point that's really important to know is about the level of control that a redevelopment uh, area and agreement can give to the municipality to deliver, to, to determine the outcome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we hear a lot in uh, Westfield about people who might be unhappy with ways certain um, new apartment buildings look or how they're constructed or whatever, but an absence of, and none of those have been done using redevelopment law. So an absence of having a redevelopment designation, we only have so much input into the outcome in terms of the quality of the construction, the public amenities that are provided in absence of that. Is, is, that, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, someone coming into a board, you know, the board really doesn't have the authority to say, okay, we want you to design a public plaza in here, you know, under the traditional zoning, we can have, um, but under the redevelopment uh, law and through drafting a redevelopment plan, we can really specify how we want a site to be developed, um, really getting down to the detail. Um, so we can say as part of a project, we want a plaza that's open to the public or we want this type of materials used, um, much more so than under traditional um, zoning in the state. And so I think I know that was something that I had heard from the public and we're trying to implement is something that more control over this development. Yeah. Um, so that also, so we can drive kind of the outcome both aesthetically and potentially financially, mm -hmm. but also said that there's some kind of consistency across what is happening all over town. So it doesn't look right. like it's, you know, one one piece of development is happening independently of another and we're not looking at them holistically. Um, so I having been a novice to this process, but I have to say, I, uh, let's talk a little bit about where we began and how we ended up where we are and what the, and what the next steps are going to be. So 
um, we began with a master plan process and uh, uh, where we had set up front that the public input into that process was really critical. Um, and I think we were very happy with the level of input and engagement. And I know our master plan consultant who led it said that uh, the level of engagement we had was definitely uh, beyond what is typical I think in, um, in, in this process in other municipalities. So that made me feel really great that we had a representation of the community. And if you could summarize for folks, uh, Don, like what, do you, what were some of the key takeaways that people said that they wanted in the master plan recommendations, which are now informing the redevelopment plan that's in front of us? Yeah, through, through the master plan re-examination process, we, we got an assessment of why people were coming to Westfield. Um, and one of the, I, I think it was number two or three on the list was the downtown. Um, of course, when we were going through the re-examination as is happening now, there was, you know, the retail environment was changing. So downtown Westfield, um, uh, a lot of retail, it was a retail center um, in the county, but that, um, the basis of that economy was changing. So we were asking the, the people of the town, what is it that you feel should be downtown? How should downtown evolve? We heard a number of things which were very informative for us. One was that um, people wanted more housing choice in town and they wanted to see um, better utilization of some of the properties in downtown, namely the, the town-owned municipal parking lots, right, which are kind of seas of asphalt in the heart of our, our economic center of, of town. Um, so people were very interested in providing housing choice, which would include um, um, building uh, residential units in mixed use structures, meaning a mix of commercial and residential uses in our downtown area. Um, you know, anecdotally, I can tell you when um, the project, uh, the, the mixed use project that was built next to the firehouse, and forgive me, I forget the name of the project, but on North Avenue, um, when that project was approved and there was some press put out about it, and I think it was the leader and maybe even tap into, I was receiving a number of calls from um, people who were interested and when the units are gonna be available, what types of units they were. And the calls we were getting weren't from people, you know, from elsewhere, they were Westfield residents. Oh, I was talking to my friends and we heard about this and when the units become available, it'll be great for me to downsize and go there. I can be right downtown. I could walk to the restaurants. I could walk to the stores. Um, I could walk to my um, insurance agent, what have you. They wanted to be in downtown and they wanted to stay in town, but they didn't want to be in the, the single family home uh, in town anymore. Um, so we knew that people wanted a, a greater availability of housing choice and they saw downtown as a place where that could be provided. Um, people were looking for um, new commercial space, um, which could be part of mixed use buildings and also allowing for um, a greater variety and size of um, office users or other commercial users to come downtown. Um, parking always uh, rears its head and people wanted a greater availability of parking. Um, there was um, some identification of, uh, as is ongoing, connecting the north and south sides of our downtown, because of course we have North Avenue, South Avenue, and the rail tracks almost split, splitting it almost um, in half. Um, people wanted to see additional public spaces downtown. Um, that was a very, um, that was heard loud and clear. And they also wanted um, architectural standards, streetscape standards. So going to your point of sort of a, a Westfield appearance, if you will, they wanted to see that um, in our downtown areas as well. So overall we saw, um, a, a desire to, uh, to, for downtown to evolve, um, that it couldn't stay as it has over uh, recent years, that there needed to be 
new spaces, whether that's public spaces, residential spaces, commercial spaces, it just couldn't remain as it was, especially seeing the successes of what was happening in, in other communities and some of those other towns I mentioned throughout the state using redevelopment law to, to help them evolve and bring themselves up to, to the current day. So let's just break down a little bit some of the things that you just articulated because um, you know a big priority of mine in this council is the really revitalization of our downtown to ensure a vibrant downtown for you know generations to come which as you mentioned is currently a top reason why that downtown and schools are always seem to be the two reasons that people give to me when I say why did you move here yeah. and um, and you know uh, but what's people always have what they think are, you know, we can oversimplify the solutions to fixing it, but um, mm -hmm. vibrant downtowns in and of itself, uh, downtown is an ecosystem and there isn't just a one fix this and everything takes care of itself. Right. Everything is somewhat interrelated. And I know the easy, easy solution that people think is a solution is, oh, just lower the rents. Um, and, you know, that's the problem and that actually, uh, and I think that's a little bit of a cop out in terms of addressing the really issues that are much more complicated than that. Um, clearly, we have no role in the free marketplace to determine what anybody could and should charge for rent. Right. But that being said, as I've told people, lowering rent just brings low rent tenants. It doesn't fundamentally change what the challenges are, and that is a lack of ongoing foot traffic and right. people living, working, and shopping in our downtown. So we need to address fundamentally the root of what the issue is. And I think we fix that and the retail problem will take care of itself. Right. And um, and I think you mentioned some really interesting things. One is we heard loud and clear about the lack of diversification of our housing stock. Right. And I think through the years, we all admit that we've seen many teardowns of these probably older, uh, maybe smaller homes coming up for bigger homes. And what the, the, the one of the outcomes of that is that we have less housing stock for new young couples right. to move into. That's a form of new entry level stock. We also don't have a place for those kids, those, em those recent empty nesters. And you know, the big joke is you see the high school graduation sign and you see the for sale sign in front of the house. Yeah. Um, and in talking to many of these families and those that have moved, um, many of them, they're not going far away. Many of them are downsizing to Mountainside or Springfield or, you know, adjacent things where they want to stay connected to the community, but they don't want the care and upkeep and the cost of the house. Right. We do not currently have those options for people. And um, so I think the idea is of bringing more residential into our downtown, which solves a couple of things. One, it diversifies the housing stock and it creates that downtown foot traffic that right. will enable a more a bit of more vibrancy. Um, and so what just for the benefit of the public so what we've done with this master plan we've got these recommendations with don just so uh succinctly summarized for us and then that what that does is that informs what we just introduced um to the council and supported by the planning board is the redevelopment plan and the redevelopment plan is nothing but i like to call like an instruction manual right for potential developers to say these is, this is the summary of the recommendations that we're looking for. Here's a bit of a toolbox. Come back to us and tell us what you would propose doing on these sites based upon what our community has said they want to see. Did I say that? Did I summarize that accurately? Yeah, very well. I mean, the, the redevelopment plan, which the mayor and council has just adopted, it doesn't change the land use regulations um, for the properties that are included in it. Um, we did have to include an affordable housing provision um, and that's pursuant to our court approved housing plan but it i think what it shows the development community and and the people of westfield as well is that the town has heard loud and clear the recommendations um, that are spelled out in the the re-examination the master plan re-examination the town is willing to use the local redevelopment and housing law um, to develop these properties but at the same time, it's going to be done how we want it done. Um, we make it clear that a redeveloper agreement will be required to, um, uh, to develop those properties. And it spells out, um, again, the how or, or what we want, um, again, referencing the reexamination. 
And I, I think this redevelopment plan that was introduced is really, um, in a sense, a starting point. It's not going to be the, the redevelopment plan for downtown. I think through a public process, it will be um, updated or redrafted and readopted. And that process will include not only the public, but um, in speaking with potential redevelopers of the sites to be sure that they understand what the town wants to see and to let them know um, how it's going to be done and when it's going to be done. And I think that I just want the public to be clear because um, I know I've gotten some questions about, well, you know, what is the, what do all these apartments mean? What does this mean? Um, we don't know any of that yet. It's not it, all the redevelopment plan is enable us is, to, is it enables us to solicit proposals from developers who would then propose what they see on the site, and that's when the public process comes in, which we would say, you know, this is what's being proposed, and we would engage the public to determine, um, you know, what what meets the recommendations of the of the master plan that the public has already weighed in on, and you know, and what do we think generally is going to be in the best interest for us long term. But uh, Dom, let me just come. Back Back to the process a little bit and then we can talk maybe a bit more specifically about that but um so the master plan we're not done with it yet right so, and i think you know so talk a little bit about we've done this redevelopment plan but talk about what ha where we are in the master plan and what happens next and then talk about also the traffic and circulation plan that is also sure. currently underway sure yeah um well what the town um completed uh, recently is actually the master plan re-examination report. And, you know, in, in speaking, um, people usually just refer to that as the master plan, but technically it's a re-examination of the town's existing master plan. Um, that re-examination is required to happen every 10 years. And really the intent of a re-examination is to, well, take a look at what's changed since the last time your master plan was updated and what recommendations are, are made to update those documents. Um, our re-examination, Mayor, as you, as you mentioned early on, was really a very significant um, process and document. There was a great deal of public input received. The plan itself is, um, contains a lot of information compared to what re-examination reports used to look like were like this skinny white paper of, and um, it didn't include much of anything to be honest. Um, but with Westfield's re-examination, we really re reimagined um, what um, the town, um, maybe not reimagining is, is the wrong word, but the town really identified how much had changed since the 2002 master plan and realized that that 2002 master plan was really outdated. And um, that's what our re-examination told us. Through the public process, we learned that a lot of things were, were ripe for evolution. We knew that um, our land use element, which dictates um, zoning districts, zoning regulations, and consequently our circulation element which talks about circulation patterns in town and traffic and to a certain extent parking we knew with the recommendations and the re-examination for all this change or evolution that we needed to update our land use plan and our circulation plan we needed to see how or we need to put more meat on the bones of what was the change and how was the change. Part of that is, you know, okay, so re-exam told us we'd like to see some more mixed use in commercial downtown. Well, how much can downtown handle, right? There's concern over traffic impacts. So as part of the land use and circulation element of the master plan, which the planning board is currently updating, we are conducting or completing a build out analysis to see what would the maximum build out be of our downtown and how the uh, roadway system, transportation system can handle that. Um, it is something which is gonna form the basis for um, not only appropriate development, but how much of that appropriate development we may be able to handle. Of course, you don't wanna design something that just creates a traffic disaster. 
um, downtown. You know, and that goes in hand in hand with what the overall policy and, and character of the community um, is in terms of what they'd want to see in terms of height or massing or density or the, the extent of the types of uses such as residential um, or commercial. And Don, um, what do you anticipate that to be wrapping up those two aspects of the, the plan, land use? Well, the, the, the build out analysis, um, there was a first draft done. I actually received a copy from um, our planning consultant. It's going to be updated. Um, so the build out analysis to a certain extent is, is complete. Um, but it needs modification. And then um, it's going to be discussed with the stakeholder committee and planning board. All of that will occur by the end of uh, this year. Um, we expect a new land use and circulation element of the master plan to be adopted by the planning board by April 1st of, of next year. Um, we're very uh, lucky in that through the reexamination since we did such an extensive public process that a lot of that work is, is out of the way and we can just really um, you know, get our, our pen to paper and get those recommendations um, uh, all, all down for the planning board to review and hopefully adopt as part of the master plan. And with the further- um, And Don, we've never, we've never- I'm so we there. I've lost a little. Can you hear me, Don? I can hear you. Okay, yes. Okay. Um, have we ever? I can now. I got you. Have you ever? Have we ever done a townwide circulation plan and traffic plan that's currently underway? Um, not, not like we are doing now, and the focus is is on the downtown. Um, I have not seen since my time here any comprehensive like traffic study anything like that. There have been individual studies the county has done of like North and South Avenue. Um, and sometimes we'll see a, a study as part of a planning board application, but nothing that I'm aware of that is equal to this. And I think that's important for the public to understand because I think historically we might have done traffic studies based upon a single uh, right. development that was happening. So, right, this is the first time we're taking a very holistic look at traffic and circulation. And it also speaks to the benefit of the general redevelopment process so that we're not, we're trying to take a very holistic and smart view to see how everything is interconnected to each other, as opposed to looking at things in isolation where you could inadvertently address traffic specific to one development, but could have some type of impact in an, in an area that maybe wasn't studied. So um, so I, I do know when people hear about development, they hear apartments and traffic and, 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 uh, and schools. And right. so I'll just, let me just touch base on a little, on a few of those. One is the traffic, which you just mentioned, doing this assessment to determine not only what we can handle, but I think it's also looking at what we do today that can be done better. Um, and so there's some inefficiencies in how our traffic and um, uh, circulation is managed today. So I think there's recommendations that they've already given to us as part of the bike and pet plan about intersections and things like that. Um, uh, so, so I can only reassure that we wouldn't do anything to your point that would, further, that would impede any quality of life issues related to traffic and circulation. Um, the other thing about residents in schools and apartments, there is a myth about the correlation that apartments means children. And the Blaustein School, where Don attended, has done studies that shows there is not the, the there is not a direct correlation to, between number of residential units in schools. And in fact, um, in Westfield, and I meet, I set up meetings about quarterly with um, Superintendent Dolan and some members of the Board of Ed to give them an update on things that are coming um, and understand about school enrollment. We just want to make sure we're very, very aligned. Um, and as a matter of fact, and the units in the, in the apartments that have been built to date uh, between 333 Central, the Jolly Trolley, the I think the Parker, um, I think in total it's about 120 units. Um, mm -hmm. There's five school-aged children in 120 units. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's actually even lower than I think what the, uh, the Blousey School would suggest. So it only reaffirms that 
these apartments are attracting those that are what we call like the young couples, the, um, the folks who are looking to downsize or what we call uh, the newly single. And you can, I'll leave it to you to determine what that means. But uh, so far our experience in Westfield specifically has been apartments do not bring children. And that, and that is absolutely, cons and we actually bring, I think they bring in fewer children than even what the Blaustein school would, would surprise, but overall, um, uh, apart certainly in downtowns and so forth. Cranford, they don't bring kids. Fanwood, they don't bring kids. So, um, and you also have to appreciate, like we get the value of the schools, as I mentioned, to attracting ch uh, to Westfield. So there'd be no reason why we would want to do anything that would actually put additional pressure, or undermine one of the primary benefits of why people move here. So, um, so, so far we haven't seen that correlation and hopefully the traffic will be addressed. Um, so Don, one question I know that some, going back to the master plan, the recommendations is that um, I know according to our master planner that we had almost based upon their experience an over-representation of, of uh, residents um, who responded. But even on an absolute basis, it's still relatively low. So there's a lot of stati statistical probability that goes into what that representation is. Um, I know from my old days at HBO and consumer research, how we would draw conclusions based upon small samples. So can, can you ta elaborate on that a little bit about how reliant the data is and how we can be assured that the recommendations are indeed represent representative of the public? Well, there's there's um, there's a couple ways. Um, you know, one whoever comes out and speaks to us, you know, that's that's what we we hear, right? Um, we use um, what we've heard to form the recommendations and and what goes into our planning documents, um, but there always is um, additional opportunity to for anyone in town to comment on any policy moving forward. You know, when the master plan is adopted, it's done so um, at a public hearing that the planning board um, uh, holds. When any land use ordinance is adopted or any redevelopment plan is adopted, it's done by way of uh, public hearing. Um, planning nowadays is very out in the open, significant public involvement component. Um, and that is to, to try and avoid a situation where a document's created which is not reflective of what the community at large would like to see. Um, I would be extremely surprised if anyone in any community, everyone um, agreed on a certain course of action. You know, everyone has their own opinions. So we have to rely on, on what we hear from the public and give the public as many opportunities as possible to comment. Um, we talked earlier about how with the redevelopment planning we're going through, there's gonna be a public component to that. It's not just going to be um, a public hearing at the council level or a planning board review. Um, we're going to you know, have public, for whatever, whatever form they take, we're gonna have public involvement, um, public involvement component available for everyone. Um, so, you know, the, the projects I've worked in in other communities, I mentioned one in Asbury Park, a significant public component, and you build um, consensus to the best that you can, and you hear what the constituents, what um, the people of the municipality have to say. Um, we don't know what you don't tell us, right? So I encourage, as, as a planner, I encourage public involvement. Um, so that we can get support and a clear indication of what direction we should be going in. And I think that's important to remember. So the, the master plan re-examination was the starting point. Then we're doing, so the process is we've introduced this redevelopment plan, which becomes kind of the instruction manual based upon that. I'm, I'm assuming we'll, we'll get that adopted on Tuesday night. And then the next step would be a designation of some of some or all or whatever those properties to a developer who will then start giving us their ideas and concepts about what they envision being there. And then that will become a public process in and of itself. Right. Um, and I did want to address, so as you, we've designated for redevelopment a total of about 20 acres in our downtown, which is quite remarkable and it's really unprecedented. And um, 
and seven of those acres are the Lord and Taylor properties, which is the main building um, and the two parking lots across the street. Right. Um, and uh, so uh, some may might have heard that uh, Hudson's Bay Company is the owner of uh, Lord and Taylor of the property. And they acquired um, a planning and development firm last year called Streetworks Development. Um, Streetworks Development has, was a, a nationally renowned, is a nationally renowned uh, development planning firm that's done work um, in places like West Hartford, Connecticut, San Jose, California, to some places in Florida, Chevy Chase or Bethesda, Maryland, um, and as big as the, re the revitalization of downtown Detroit in the last 10 years. Um, and so Streetworks Development has now been bought by Hudson's Bay, and they are charged with looking at all of the real estate assets in the Hudson's Bay portfolio, which is in the U.S. and Canada mostly, and not all of them, but those where they think there's an opportunity for some transformation, of which clearly Westfield is one of them. And, uh, and what's interesting about Streetworks is not only really kind of the, the work specifically that they do, but it's how they go about it. And they are very committed to it. They're very grassroots and very public oriented. So um, at their request and in the spirit of collaboration, we've invited the executives from Streetworks Development um, and Hudson's Bay to come to our council meeting on Tuesday night to give an overview of uh, their process, who they are, their process, and I think an expectation that we as the public will have the opportunities to get to know them and what they do um, over, you know, the next six to 12 months or whatever it may be as they as they take a look at opportunities specific, uh, you know, on their property and help us time to reimagine the downtown based upon the feedback that we've gotten. Um, I did want to talk about though, because I am amused. Um, when we talk about Lori and Taylor, we get a gazillion ideas from the public about what should go there. I want to see fields, I want to see a park, I want to see a drive-in movie theater, I want to see you know this but it is important to remember um, it is private property and they pay us about a 500 and they're our large, largest downtown property owner they pay us five hundred and fifty thousand dollars plus in property taxes um, so that makes them one of our top property to, uh, property taxpayers so um, it's pretty important that we retain and maintain that rateable and hopefully expand that rateable and so uh, as great as public space and so forth it is, it's, it wouldn't solve or help us on the revenue side. And quite frankly, from them, an investment side, I mean, they have uh, you know, a P&L that they're responsible for too. So at the end of the day, we hope to be able to come up with some collaboration where uh, we deliver things that will uh, benefit the community based upon the master plan recommendations, maintain our, um, our, uh, our property tax base and others. Um, and I, I do want to also address, so anyway, also say as I invite everybody to the council meeting, it begins at eight o'clock on Tuesday night, there'll be Zoom information that's coming to hear their presentation. It'll be very brief, but I think it is just a, here we are, uh, we look forward to working through kind of conversation, but I think you'll be very impressed with um, not only what they've done, but what their process is. Uh, and I did want to talk about, um, you know, going back to the 20 acres and people like, wow, that's a lot of development. Uh, just because we designated all of that property doesn't mean we're going to develop all that property. We right. intentionally uh, did as much as we was we thought was we could so that we had flexibility to make to, 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 to think about solutions that worked in the right place. So, for example, if we had only designated, um, let's say, the South Avenue parking lot we would have been making presumptions that we already know specifically what should go there. And maybe in the context of the larger area, there could be things that belong on the South Avenue parking lot, but maybe other things that should be going someplace else. So it just expands the chessboard for us to take a very holistic view of what should go there. So we don't over, you know, we, you know, you might want to spread things out. You may, some things don't ever get developed, but I also think it's important to know about the municipal parking lots that you mentioned, Don. In these days and age, day and age, the the level of surface parking lots we have is completely out of sync with the times. Right. And we have incredible expansive acreage of parking lots, but we still have a parking problem. And anticipate post COVID that parking problem will return. 
And it just seems uh, just the most inefficient use of space. Um, and not only that, in the absence of our ability to really maximize the benefit of that space to the public, every taxpayer in town is, uh, is act fundamentally subsidizing the, the, the surface parking lots that aren't used to deliver rateables to us. Mm -hmm. And I can't overstate the, from a revenue perspective, how important it is to figure out how we can expand and diversify our tax base. 90% um, of our taxes are currently paid by residents. That's the highest percentage in the county. Nobody, everybody else has diversified or bad, they have the benefit of some type of commercial tax base, but we haven't. And, but yet we sit on all these municipal lots that have an opportunity to, to not only solve our downtown vibrancy issue, but also deliver rateables to the town. And I think we have an obligation to consider what, what that could look like. Right. I think of, um, you know, you're talking about downtown parking lots. My mind immediately goes to Princeton, where there are surface parking, there were surface parking lots in part of that downtown. They were able to transform that into public space, new library, um, and shopping and, and housing opportunities. And it was a very transformative project for a part of their downtown. And there's no reason why something like that can't happen here. And as you will know, so Michael Place, who sits on our planning board, Westfield resident, is the planner in Princeton. And he will tell you that um, example that you just uh, mentioned has become the heartbeat of, their, of that Princeton downtown. So, um, so we all see what those possibilities are. So, so maybe um, with that, we could see if there's any questions. Um, so Kim, I assume you're there. Are there any questions for us that we haven't covered? Hi, Mayor, I'm here, yes. Um, you covered many of them in terms of questions that came in about impact on the schools, uh, numbers about the questions of housing units, housing units that might be in play, um, ideas for the site itself, and also um, the master plan input and how that is factored into any decision-making in terms of representat representation from residents. I do have a few more that have come in. Um, and if any of those topics I just mentioned, you feel you want to expand upon, the, the, that's what came up in the other questions. But we've got here. Yeah, um, go ahead. Let me just reiterate on a couple of those before I forget. Sure. So, um, you know, we, you, we, we, what we talk about is, and people have talked about apartments, and they tell us what, we're, what we haven't talked about is public amenities and things that we really would like to see and need. Um, our current beautiful firehouse no longer meets safe, modern safety codes. And it's, it's, we need a new firehouse and we need to find a location for it and we need to find a way to pay for it. Um, over and over again, we've heard the need and desire for a community center that services teens and seniors and could also have some kind of meeting space. It would be fantastic to have something like that um, downtown. Uh, I think um, a place that potential expansion of the library maybe would be a great place to have a, a satellite library um, in our town someplace that people could become kind of a central gather gathering place. And open space, as Don mentioned, like we need more public plazas and more green space and, and parks and that really becomes a place where people can come and spend the day and there's more, you know, a place to sit and have lunch and, and all of those types of places. And then not to mention our infrastructure, our sidewalks, our signage, um, all of those, our wayfinding, uh, the alleyways that help connect, uh, you know, uh, uh, things to each other. Those are all really things that are make really critical, uh, a great experience in anyone's downtown. And uh, those are the types of things we, we, we would love to see. And so um, we need, uh, uh, revenue for that and uh, but I think and we like I said exp expanding our tax rateable so it's not just about um, apartments and I, I want to stress commercial office space um, the world the post COVID word is that you know a lot of companies will be looking to create more regional to potentially co-working spaces in places that have easy access to transit um, and Westfield fits that bill so being able to create um, public commercial office space to support potential new tenants um, and co-working space 
um, would be fantastic and a way for people to be able to, you know, live and work uh, in their town. And of course, you can't create commercial office space if you don't have parking to support it. So, um, so it's not only parking to address the deficiencies that we have today, but it's parking to enable things like commercial office space, employees, um, and employers to be able to come to our downtown. So sorry, Kim, now, now, now the next question. Sure, okay, we have a question from Laura Kenny, and Laura would like to know what planning tools are available to continue the work of preserving the town's historic character and preventing teardowns? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, you know, teardowns have been an ongoing issue in town. Um, going back about 10, 12 years ago, there was a task force formed by the then mayor to um, look at the issue of teardowns and and that task force um, ultimately recommended a number of amendments to the town land use ordinance the town zoning ordinance and and that is that is one tool um, we know that teardowns are still an issue it came up during the master plan re-examination there's a there's a section in the re-examination that talks about it. People um, are, are people see it as an important issue. You know, they're unsatisfied which with what is built in the place of of a teardown. And we talked a, a bit earlier about some of the concerns with the loss of these homes. In that, not only there is there an impact on neighborhood character because what is built in place may be significantly out of place. Um, with the neighborhood, but also a lot of times they're the smaller, um, what could be called starter homes. Um, impact on schools even, you know, these smaller homes, um, fewer number of bedrooms than the homes being built. You know, I think the, the homes we're seeing being built have four or five bedrooms uh, in them. People are really, or builders are seeking to put as much home on a lot as the zoning will uh, permit. So, Back in 2009, a number of amendments were passed to the land use ordinance, further restricting the volume of homes that could be built and um, um, percentage of coverages that can be uh, built on a lot. So even though that work was done in 2009, the problem continues, right? So what do we do? Well, through this master plan process we're going through now, we wanna be sure that our zoning is appropriate for the various neighborhoods. And the zoning would include issues such as setbacks from property lines, allowable building coverage on the lot, um, the maximum amount of floor area ratio, which is essentially the, the floor area in a building as compared to the size of the lot, um, and uh, permitted heights. Really trying to be sure that what can be built is in line with what exists in a neighborhood. Um, another important um, tool is historic preservation. And a lot of people don't realize that historic preservation is actually part of the town zoning ordinance. It is a land use ordinance regulation that comes out of the state municipal land use law and is put into a municipality zoning ordinance. If um, a property is locally um, historically designated or is part of a historic district, there is a um, additional set of regulations or a zoning overlay that's placed on the property where the Historic Preservation Commission can look at what is proposed in terms of construction to be sure that what is done fits in with the character of the neighborhood. Um, and um, our Historic Preservation Ordinance recently, uh, a, a demolition delay provision has been added to it to encourage people to take a look at alternatives to demolition, maybe rehabilitation of certain homes can be um, completed rather than a complete loss of them and then potential impact on the, the neighborhood character for why people came here um, and chose to live on, on a certain block in town. So, and that'll all be part of the land use uh, uh, assessment that's happening currently. And I, you brought up two things that I just wanted to mention. One is about the historic character of our downtown 
And I do think one thing that we are very and going to be very mindful of is that whatever gets we consider on any of these uh, properties that are currently potential sites for redevelopment, we want to make sure that we preserve the character and the integrity of our downtown. Um, and so that's something that will be critical to any uh, any consideration of any proposal by a developer. And the other thing I wanted you wanted to mention, Don, regarding teardowns. Um, and schools, uh, you know, people are talk a lot about the impact of apartments on schools and we're finding that apartments don't really bring kids, but to what you just suggested, and then this is a, a conversation with the school board as well, teardowns are actually having a much bigger impact on overcrowding of the schools, what Don just said. You tear down a starter home of three bedrooms and you're replacing it with four or five um, bedrooms. And just by nature of the teardowns, you're bringing more kids to our school systems. And so, uh, so the teardowns have had issues related to neighborhood character, but also school impact much more significantly than what we anticipate any type of new uh, resident apartments might have. That's right. Okay, we Anything have. Anything else, Kim? Uh, yep, we've got a couple more. Uh, we've got uh, from Bill West. Bill would like to know regarding the recently um, publicized redevelopment plan that is up for adoption next week. Bill said he noticed that a Union County master plan and also a state development and redevelopment plan were included in that document. And can you please explain the relationship and reasons why these were identified in the plan? Sure. Um, the local redevelopment and housing law outlines the required content of a redevelopment plan. Um, one piece uh, is a, um, a relationship of the redevelopment plan to the county master plan and the state development and redevelopment plan. So, okay, so why does the statute ask for this? Um, the intent is to link the local redevelopment planning process with county and state objectives, right? Um, you don't want a redevelopment plan that's wholly inconsistent with what the county plan calls for or a state plan calls for. I mean, a, a really out there example would be, you know, you have an environmentally sensitive area and municipality wants to put a major shopping center right into the middle of that. Um, so our redevelopment plan um, touches upon the county master plan, which talks about development along transit corridors and um, need for a mix of housing affordabilities um, and how this redevelopment plan is, is consistent with that. It's basically because our underlying zoning is already consistent with that. Um, as far as the state plan goes, uh, the town of Westfield is located in what's called planning area one. And that's a part of the state which is um, really identified for much of the state's future development and redevelopment. Existing built up areas, we want to be sure that those areas stay economically healthy and are, are revitalized when they need to be. And by um, doing what we're doing as, as we're talking about today and, and a focus on downtown and using the redevelopment law, we're really helping to fulfill that state plan uh, goal or objective for planning area one. So we always want to, um, look at the local redevelopment process and compare it to regional goals and objectives to try and ensure consistency for appropriate development in communities. Okay, and as a follow-up, um, Bill would also like to know regarding the traffic and circulation study mm -hmm. forum, will these findings be presented to the public for comment? Um, that's a good question. Um, uh, Bill, I believe the public comment on that would be probably at the beginning of, of next year and they would be built into a first iteration draft of the master plan. Okay. Um, we have a comment from Debbie Burslin. Debbie said it's always been mentioned in the previous master plans that a new location for a north side firehouse is needed, as you mentioned and that the original firehouse number one reverts to the recreation department for use. Is that still so? Um, I know that the, the location of the firehouse is still very much under uh, discussion. Um, the existing building does not, is not up to modern standards when it comes uh, to the apparatus that the department uses. Whether or not it would go to the Department of Recreation, um, 
I, I haven't heard that, Debbie, uh, meaning I haven't read it. I'm, I'm not saying it's not there, um, but that hasn't been discussed um, to my knowledge as of late. I don't know, Mayor, if you have anything. No, I, 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 I haven't heard that, nor have we discussed uh, possibilities for the existing firehouse in absence of knowing um, where and when the current fire folks would be relocated. So, but I hadn't heard that. Oh, interesting look into that. Okay, we have um, a comment from Robert Gordon. Uh, Robert is letting us know that there's, um, no one is allowed to build by the train station without providing a parking deck. Uh, same as every other town in the country. So do we have any comment about that? Um, I, I would, well, I would say any development adjacent to the rail tracks, especially on the, the municipally owned um, um, surface parking lots, number one, you've got to, um, my policy recommendation to the governing body would be, not only do you have a replacement of the parking spaces that are lost, but you provide for any additional um, they're identified to be needed, as well as serving the additional parking impacts of any new development of those sites. Um, so I think it would be very likely that we'd see some kind of structured parking to the, the size and extent of what is needed um, would yet is yet to be determined, but I wouldn't be surprised to see structured parking um, at some level um, on those lots. Okay, last call if anyone's got a comment. I've gone through all the ones that we've received here. And um, I would only read it, I know it's been an hour, so uh, we'll wrap up. And I, I just wanna reiterate, um, first, thank you, Don, for your expertise to, uh, and uh, transparency. And, um, and I just wanted to make sure that the public is educated about the process and exactly what is happening. And I can promise you there will be nothing, uh, you won't suddenly see anything erected in town <laughs> without having had an opportunity to weigh in on it and be very transparent about what's going on there and why. So this is just really the, um, the, the beginning of the public process, I think, after this redevelopment plan is adopted. Um, uh, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, it's t I think I've heard that we've done about five years worth of planning and about a year and a half. And I, I, I think because the public hasn't seen a lot of the tangible outcome of that yet, it may not feel like, and I have an appreciation for how much progress we've made, but a big, big part of that is because of Don and his unbelievable professionalism and abilities to do so much so, um, and work with our redevelopment professionals. So thank you, Don, for thank your- you, Mayor. I really appreciate that. It really, and, um, and we've got great professionals on staff on hand too that we've hired that are helping us through this. So lots more, this is just the beginning of the public conversation. Uh, I, again, uh, please uh, join us on Tuesday at 8 p.m. for the town council meeting to, uh, to meet Streetworks Development here and you know what else is going on. I always like it when people show up at our council meetings. Uh, but again, there'll be lots more to come. This is just the beginning. I just wanna make sure the public was informed about what we we're doing. So thank you all very much. Thank you everybody.